All right, welcome back. Now, we're continuing our theme around women and the most pressing issues they face during Women's History Month, which is March. Now, in 2019, Equileap published a report on gender equality in Kenya, finding that on average, women earn 32% less than their male counterparts compared to 23% globally. So why does the gender wage gap or pay gap still persist? And how do we begin to dismantle the barriers that are keeping women from earning what they are worth. Well, joining me in studio now are Dr. Patricia Murugami, the Chief Executive Officer of Breakthrough Leadership Transformation, and Zuhura Odiambo, CEO of New Revenue Solutions Africa, a gender champion and chair of the Gender Subsector Board of GBB and mental health. Ladies, thank you so much for coming in. Thank Let's you. quickly jump into the issue of the myths. And, and there's one that comes up quite a bit, that women are not undervalued, they just choose low-paying jobs. Um, you know, what do you make of that first myth? I'll start with you, Dr. Patricia. It's such a great question, because it all starts from the idea that women should work on the land but not own the land. Mm. So that same mindset continues to the workplace. And I think in the past we saw that women would look for jobs that were not in STEM, right. now STEAM. But we are seeing that if you look at some of the top corporates, women are the ones heading the finance, chief commercial, CEO. So that's a myth that's been busted. Okay. And what we've seen in the work we've been doing around leadership development is that these women are raising their hands farther, faster, higher than the past. However, there are still some barriers. Oh, certainly. And Zuhura, there's another one that comes up. The problem is women don't ask for enough at the negotiating table, and that is why they start off a bit lower than their male counterparts. What do you make of that myth? Uh, thank you, Victoria. And it's not only at the negotiation table. Women do not, um, uh, some women do not, you know, even take the opportunity. Mm. You're told uh, uh, from the aspect of understanding an opportunity that is placed for a woman, uh, you fear even, you know, applying for a job because you think you have two things that you can't do. Yeah. Uh, nevertheless, you see on the other side, a man has two things he can do and he actually applies for that particular job. Mm -hmm. Now, with that particular notion, by the time I'm getting into an interview desk, I'm also thinking, wow, I think I can do it so well, so let me not ask for more. And even where then uh, there's an opportunity uh, for a good uh, pay that could be given to you, you realize you could even add yourself 20,000 to change jobs. And you realize sometimes, you know, to you, you're looking at it like, let me prove myself first. And when I get into the system, maybe they will look at it. But the opportunity is you need to declare while you're on the negotiation table about what you're bringing uh, as yourself onto the, to the organization and how the organization is able to see you as an asset for them every other day. So you're encouraged to bring that and not to fear and be able to also evaluate. I mean, what vision have you put for yourself? What do you see in five years? Where do I want to be? How do I want to earn? I mean, what should my pay be? Because remember, again, everything is time bound. What I can do at the 25 is different from what I would do at 35 and 45 and 65. Mm. So when I have all the energy that I can give, I would give it because then there's a time that will come then I wouldn't be able to do that. And at that particular time, I should see myself on a prime uh, placement. But better still, where are we upskilling? Mm. So we need to continue upskilling so that you can be on the negotiating table with, of course, a very good uh, support yeah. and also with the experience that you bring on board and the other responsibilities that we have. Let's go to something that really is at the heart of this gender wage or pay gap, if you will, and that's the motherhood penalty. And it essentially says women earn less because they have children. I heard an expert put it this way, that it's more an issue of mothers versus everyone else when you look at the pay scale. Um, you know, Dr. Patricia, when you look at that fact, uh, when women reach their childbearing years, they tend to lose out sick days for their kids school meetings, they can't go on their work trip. Oftentimes things that would put them ahead, get them the partnership uh, you know, position, for instance, if they're at a law firm, they can't do a lot of those things their male counterparts can because they have to tend to the kids at home. So you know, what do you make of that whole idea of the motherhood penalty? Let me start by saying that the one job that no researcher has ever put a, job, a, a prize on is motherhood. Mm. Housewives don't have 
a pay scale. And that means that actually the value they bring makes a world of a difference. So the first thing is, how do you perceive the work that you're doing at home? It's invaluable. I remember one lady who took an off, off career ramp, which is exactly what you're saying. When the children are coming, she's like, I can't hack this. So she took time off. And so she met me to coach her now that she was ready to go back to work six years later. And she's like, what am I going to say about that gap? And I told her, what have you been doing? She told me, she was very defensive because people would ask her, what do you do? And she always felt demeaned. Mm. I told her, no, as a coach, I actually want to know what do you do? So she says, well, I spend half the day just creating values in my children. So I told her, how would you describe that in corporate lingo? She's like, I don't know. I told her, talent development. Do you see the way you start up? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Then I told her, so what else do you do? Ah, I manage the family budget. I said, what would you call that? She's like, oh, I'm getting it. Financial management. I said, there we go. And how, what else do you do? Oh, I manage the real estate properties of my husband and their family. So what's that? Portfolio management. Hmm. So I told her, put those things down in the lingo of corporate speak. Right. Because the work that is done, the hidden work that's done at home, and we've seen the pandemic increased the uh, hidden work burden on women is something that actually adds value to their ability to lead at work. So let's not look at it as a penalty, but as an opportunity. Yeah. And that opportunity comes around when we shift the way we look at it. So the idea of work-life balance is not the idea. It's work-life integration. That if at home I'm managing children with different personalities, then I can do the same at work with a team of five people who are different personalities. Yeah. Secondly, some corporates are doing an incredible job. Mm. They've decided they can't lose any more women. I just saw Unilever and, and I think Sana Chartered are now doing six months paid maternity leave. Mm. Another insight that was very interesting yeah. is miscarriage leave. Now that's the first time I've had a corporate. And I think Unilever are actually giving uh, 45 days to women and five days to men as compassionate leave when a miscarriage happens. Wow. When women have experienced those kind of challenges that have to do with having children, mm -hmm. whether you're an angel mom, invisible mom, or a mom who's held your child, you're still a mother. Mm -hmm. So the struggle of actually overcoming that is half the job. Lastly, women must just rise up. This world, those consumers that your business is trying to get to can only come when women have children. Mm -hmm. So not only are you doing something that's so unique in terms of bringing life into the world, but also from a capitalist perspective, right. those are customers of the future. So rise up. And when the children come, have them. Yeah. Because the propaganda that we've been sold as Africans, that we should have fewer children, is really a myth. It's a way of dominating us so that we don't actually have the mental bandwidth and the people to do the work that many countries are struggling with, with a wintering population. No, absolutely. Let me come to you, Zuhura, on the issue of barriers, because those still exist. Um, institutional barriers, they could come as unconscious bias as well that plays out in, in the workplace. I came across a very interesting statistic uh, from IBM that did a report this year that the number of women at the C-suite level is at 11 percent. At the board level, 10 percent. What needs to be done to increase those numbers? Do we need to see more short listing of women for those positions, for instance? And then having women put themselves out there more. Uh, if you talk about um, having the number of women on the C-suite, and let me just talk about even from the board level, and you saw some of the yeah. wins that uh, I have made with the Nairobi Securities Exchange to ensure that we have the listed companies actually have 30% representation of women on board. It right. starts from the board level, where you're able to then have decision making and policies, and some of the things that are bought in by the CEO and the ex -co to be able to ensure that even whatever is being put there can actually be um, celebrated by the organization and you can be able to see that. Because lack of that, which was the yesterday problem, is where we have seen you wish for that, but at the board, if example, your board doesn't have no woman mm -hmm. or has one woman in that, it's so hard for them to understand even any experience about uh, maternal. And you've seen some of the wins that we have had from your likes of Standard Chartered, which I happen to have you know, spoken to in International Women's Day, doing amazing things and even EABL and coming all the way into how are you building these women to come up. So opportunities are there, but we've seen we're losing a lot of women from middle level management. Mm. And that's the childbearing um, space. And, and, and we are happy that we're seeing uh, organizations that are now putting different policies in place to support these women. So 
at that particular time, you're like, do I really need this? Remember, by the time you're getting into exco uh, or you're getting into board level, there's a lot that happens around that. Uh, we have a lot that you have to deal with and even be able to balance. And at that time, somebody's saying, should I really do that work? Or can I just be doing my work and going home? I don't need to do board papers. I don't need to be answerable on the expansion strategy for the organization for Africa. Can I just do my departmental? And a lot of women go there while men then stand up for that. So opportunity are there. But again, the other thing that's being encouraged is don't go into it alone. Yeah. I mean, where are you having your mentors? Where are you having your sponsors? And the right sp sponsors connotation and not the Kenyan one. Where then you're able to have people that can r uh, take you up. There have been people who've been there before us. And those are sometimes the wisdom that we lack. So women don't want to share to say, I need help here. The men, they could actually meet in a club and say, I need help here. So we're encouraging, don't go into it alone, but then also find out from those that have been there, those who are looking like your mentors, to carry you, right. and at the same time also within the organization. Self-appraise yourself, don't wait for appraisals. Get to your boss and say, uh, this is what I want to put out. Did you understand that I've done this and that? Which area can I change? which are my other feeling uh, spaces that I need to improve about, and you'll be shocked that you can do it. But women, the fearing and saying, I don't want, remember, we've seen also top women who've even taken C-suite positions. Uh, they wake up and in the morning you're on the newspaper, <laughs> and uh, it's a whole bad headline, and you say, wow, did I need that for my family? Everybody is judging me, and because maybe you were strong. When a man has that kind of headline, <laughs> he will not even feel a big deal, and the next day he's giving his high fives to his friends, yeah. while the woman, you go into mental health. And I liked what Dr. Patricia said here about the miscarriage leave, because one thing, and also having championed the mental health conversation at KEPSA, we've seen a lot of increase into the mental health cases. Now think about this woman who's gone through miscarriage, two weeks you expect her to, uh, at the office, she will smile there, but when she gets to the office, uh, when she gets home, she's crying, because know, she doesn't know how to address, and everybody asks you, I said, baby, what did you get, a girl, a boy? They're not seeing anything, and sometimes you cover that. What does that affect your productivity? Absolutely. And those are the things that we need to look into. Let me finish with you, uh, Dr. Patricia, on the issue of negotiation. Women simply do not want to talk about money. <laughs> whether it is in the corporate space, as an entrepreneur, whether it is for a gig, they don't like the money conversation, but they have to have it. Let me just start by saying, ask for what you need. Hmm. You know, just recently, as uh, Zura was talking about Standard Chartered, so this International Women's Day, many corporates ask me, you know, come and speak to us. And, and actually, I earn a living by speaking and educating people. And so when the corporate says, we really value our women, they say, so what's your budget? Then they say, would you like to do it for free? I'm like, my children do not eat pro bono. Right. And with a calm face. And the last conversation I had with one of the corporates, I said, you know, this is part of the stereotypes. This embracing equity is not happening because if a man tells you his dollar rate, you yeah. never negotiate. But when a woman does, you start saying, no, why don't we just do 50%? So the first thing, know your worth and add VAT. And what do I mean? Not the VAT of tax, <laughs> but the one of know the value you're bringing to the table. Value added table. Mm. You know, so that's the first thing. Secondly, just get comfortable with the money conversation. In fact, when I'm coaching people to get to the workplace and to negotiate, I tell them do an Excel worksheet and just project the next five years what will be the age of your children. So if you realize your children are going to campus in the next, you will not negotiate the way you'd have negotiated. <laughs> Imagine that you're the one taking care of your parents, aging parents, and at the same time, they're not covered. Most insurance covers do not cover them. So that should come in. Then just think about all the other inflationary factors that you need to think about. But what I'm seeing, by and large, is that women really beat themselves down. When they make a mistake in, 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 in uh, negotiating and they get in and they realize the same guy who is, has the same potential as you, has the same qualifications, he's earning for every 100 shillings, you're earning 68. Then you start feeling, no, this shouldn't be. And you start sulking, stop sulking. Part of it is just to embrace the fact that you made the mistake, but look at it as failure as a lesson. And then lastly, ask for the help around the people around you. Yeah. One of the things that I found is that I have found allies who speak about you in rooms that you're not there. Mm. And I just want to you know, encourage both men and women who are senior. If you know Victoria does an excellent job, speak about her work in a room that she doesn't have access to. Mm. 
and don't allow a woman to actually be suppressed because of the fact that she wasn't able to speak up. Go for coaching ladies, get into the leadership programs, get the mentorship and even get reverse mentors. Young people tend to be so much more courageous when it comes to asking for what they need. It's time we also upskilled as women in the workplace. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Dr. Patricia Zuhura, for your insights. This is just the beginning of these kinds of discussions to have women to be more bold, put themselves out there, and hopefully get paid what they are worth. Let's take a short break here on Citizen Weekend Sports.